Hello everyone, welcome to Easy Ganit. This is Amit Sadana, and in this video, I'll be taking questions of algebra from previous year's ZAT paper for students who are going to appear for ZAT 2022. So, in this video, I'll be taking part 3 of algebra previous year question. I'm taking questions of all previous year ZAT paper from 2008 to 2021. Subscribe to the channel Easy Ganit by Smear for 100% syllabus coverage for CAT and OMITs. So, guys, in the previous two part, I have covered questions till question number 12. So, here is question number 13. X is given to you as greater than 0, the minimum value of this expression. See, guys, X is given to me as greater than 0. That means X is, you can say that X is a positive real number. Now, you need to modify this expression. Look at this whole expression carefully. Try to modify this, right? You see that, guys? Can I write down this whole value as this whole expression, right? Look at the numerator value, guys, right? Look at the numerator. Let's first solve the numerator part, right? The numerator part of this expression is x plus 1 upon x raised to power 6. Can I write down this as x plus 1 upon x raised to power 3 raised to power 2, right? Minus. Now, try to take the 2 inside the bracket. This is x power 6 plus 1 upon x power 6 plus 2, right? Now, guys, let's say that x plus 1 upon x raised to power cube is basically, right? I'm, I'm putting this whole value as, let's say, t, so that we can simplify it. Now, let's say that this whole value is t. This is t square minus. Look at this one, guys. x power 6 plus 1 upon x power 6 plus 2 is nothing but it's a, it's a square of x cube plus 1 upon x cube, the square of this value, right? Now, now red, rest, let's write down this value as... A, let's say guys right you see that this is t square minus a square if this is t square minus a square can I write it down as t minus a into t plus a yes we can write it down right now simplify this expression here guys in the numerator the value that we have is t minus a into t plus a and in the denominator if you look carefully this x plus 1 upon x cube, right? This whole thing, this whole thing is t for us, right? We have assumed this value to be as t. And we have assumed this whole value to be as a. Now, this is a. And this will get cancelled. So, we'll be left with only t minus a. Now, what is t minus a? t is x plus 1 upon x whole cube. And what is a? a is x cube plus 1 upon x cube, right? This is a. Now, if you simplify this, this is a cube plus b cube plus 3ab into a plus b minus x cube minus 1 upon x cube. These two terms will get cancelled. Finally, this whole expression will reduce down to 3 times of x plus 1 upon x. Now, we know that we know that x, x plus 1 upon x. See guys, it, it, we know that x is greater than 0, right? If x is greater than 0, can I say that x plus 1 upon x? x plus 1 upon x must be greater than 2 by using the AMGM rule. If x is greater than 0, then the arithmetic mean of the positive real number will be greater than geometric mean of the positive real number, right? So can I say x plus 1 upon x is greater than or equal to 2? Now, if this expression is greater than or equal to 2, then this whole expression will be greater than or equal to 6. So, therefore, the mean value of this whole expression will be equal to 6. That is answer D. D is the correct answer to the question. Question number 14 is the greatest integer function question. It says that if greatest integer functions, right, denote this, right, as a value which is, is a greatest integer which is less than or equal to x. Now, Everybody know the basic definition of greatest integer function. Means if I'm putting the value of x as 3.1, then I need to find out the greatest possible integer which is less than or equal to 3.1. The greatest possible integer which is less than or equal to 3.1 is 3. So therefore, the greatest integer function output will be equal to 3 here. Now, if you observe this all expression, right, we have a greatest integer function outside of these fractions. See that 1 by 3 is less than 1. So, you need to know that if I am trying to find out a greatest integer function of, 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 of value which is less than 1. For example, if I try to find out the greatest integer function of 0 0.12. So, basically what I am trying to find, trying, what, what I am trying to do is finding that value, finding the greatest possible integer which is less than 0 0.12. We know that between 0 and 1, greater 0 0.12 will lie over here. 
the greatest integer which is less than 0 0.12 is 0. So this value will be equal to 0. Similarly, greatest integer function of 0 0.33 will also be 0. Any value which is greater than 0, less than 1, the greatest integer function will give the output as 0. Now, can I say that this output will be 0? This output will also be 0. Now, you need to observe that. You see that the first term is same, right? In all of these in, in all of these terms, the first fraction is same as 1 by 3. Only the second fraction is keeps keeps on increasing. This is 1 by 99, this is 2 by 99, so next we have 3 by 99, next we have 4 by 99, and this will go on till 98 by 99. Now guys, I know that 1 by 3 is, is less than 1. If I want this value to be greater than or equal to 1, then I need to add 2 by 3 to this value, right? Now, if I have 99 in the denominator, in the second fraction, then to make this whole fraction as 2 by 3, I need 66 in the numerator. Can I say that greatest integer output of all of these terms till, till, till 1 by 3 plus 65 upon 99 will be equal to 0 because this value is less than 1. If this is less than 1, greatest function, greatest integer function of this will be 0, right? The output would be 0. So therefore, the first term, the first term that will give you the resultant value, the output as 1, would be 1 by 3 plus 66 upon 99. Now this value is 1, right? So the next value would be 1 by 3 plus 67 upon 99. The greatest integer function of this output will also be 1. So this will go on, this will go on till 98 upon 99. As we can see that, all of these values are one point something and the greatest integer function, greatest integer function of one point something will always be equal to one, right? If a value is, if a value is greater, if, if n is greater than or equal to one but less than two, then the greatest integer function of all of these values will definitely be equal to one. So this value is also one point something, right? So all of these output or the, the output of all of these functions will be equal to one. So now you can see that all these values, right? How many values, how many times will get this value of n? This will be equal to the number of terms, right? n here is 66 and it goes on till 98. So basically you're supposed to find out the number of terms. If I'm saying that the number of terms lies in the range of 66 to 98, how many terms are there? The total number of terms are 98 minus 66 plus one, right? This will be equal to 33. So there'll be total, so this one will be added for 33 number of times. So one will be added for 33 number of times. So the final value will be equal to 33. B option is a correct answer to the question. This was an easy question, guys. If you know the basic definition of greatest integer function, you can easily solve the question. Question number 15, the operation bracket X is defined as bracket of one is equal to two, X plus Y is bracket X bracket Y. So this is nothing, this operation is nothing but a kind of function, right? Right. Can I say that this, let's assume that this is a kind of function. And, and if I'm supposed to find out the value of f of 1, it is 2. And if I'm supposed to find out the value of f of x plus y, it is f of x into f of y, right? And we are supposed to find out for what value of n, this value will be equal to 1, 0, double 2. It's very simple. It's just the understanding of the statement, guys, right? Now, if I want to find out the value of 2, if I put x as 1, y as 1, this will be equal to f of 1 multiplied by f of 1. Now, can I say that f of 2 will be equal to 2 multiplied by 2, that is 2 square. If I want to find out f of 3, now this x can be put as 2, y can be put as 1. In this case, I'll be getting this as f of 2 dot f of 1. Now, f of 2 is 2 square, f of 1 is 2. So you can see that f of 3 will be equal to 2 cube. So you can see that now, if I, you can generalize it now, can I say that f of n will be equal to 2 raised to power n. Now if you look at this whole expression, this is, if I put the value of x as 1, I'll be getting the first function as f of 1, then I'll be getting f of 2, then I'll be getting f of 3. This goes on till f of n and I'm supposed to find out for what value of n this whole expression will be equal to 1022. f of 1 is 2 power 1 f of 2 is 2 power 2, f of 3 is 2 power 3, and so on. 
f of n is 2 power n is equal to 1022. Now this is a into r raised to power n sum of infinite terms of a gp. Guys, I'm sure you know that sum of infinite terms of a gp series is a into r power n minus 1 upon r minus 1. This is sum of n terms of a gp. Ratio is greater than 1 here, right? Right. So you can see that this is a gp series. So I can apply this, right? Sum of infinite terms of a gp series will be equal to 1, 0, 2, 2. Guys, 2 power n minus 1, 2, 5, 1, 1. Can I say 2 power n will be 512? Now, if 2 power n is 512, that is 2 power 9. So, n will be equal to 9 here, right? So, b would be the correct answer to the question. The value of n will be 9. Question number 16. Here in this question, we are supposed to find out the domain of the function, right? f of x is equal to this. See, guys, you need to know the basics of the log function. If I'm, if I, if I, if the base is greater than 1, right, log of x to the base p, if I'm trying to find out the value of log of x to the base p, you need to make sure that the domain, right, the value inside the log function cannot be negative. x has to be greater than 0. Log is not defined for the negative values of x, right? We know that if base is greater than 1, then the function of log, this is a graph of it, right? That means Right? If x tends to 0, if the value of x, if the value of input ten, tends to 0, y tends to infinity, right? This is the, this is the, at x equal to 1, this becomes 0, right? So this is the basic log function, that x equal to b, at x equal to b, the value of log function will be 1, right? This will be 1. Log is not defined for negative values of x. So if I want to find out the domain of a log function, I need to make sure that value inside the log has to be greater than 0. So that means, that means this function will be defined only if log of log of 20x minus x square minus 91 to the base 5 to the base 3 has to be greater than 0. Right? Because you see that the outside, the, 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 the last log that we are using is at the base of 7. So the value inside this has to be greater than 0 if you want to define this function, right? Now, can I write down this function as log of 20x minus x square minus 91 to the base to the base 5 would be greater than 3 power 0. Why so? Because if log of a to the base b is x, then the value of a is equal to b power x. That's a standard law of log, right? It's, it's actually the definition of log, right? So, can I further write it down as 20x minus x square minus 91 to be greater than 3 power 0 is 1 to be greater than 5 power 1, right? Now, this tells me 20x minus x square minus 96 to be greater than 0. This is x square minus 20x plus 96 to be less than 0 because we are multiplying it with the value of x uh, with, the, with the negative value of x so therefore sign of inequality will get changed right now we need to factorize it guys right 96 you can see that we can factorize it as x square minus 12x minus 8x plus 96 to be less than 0 or this is x into x minus 12 minus 8 x minus 12 less than 0 now, if I'm taking the value of x as 8 to 12, you can see that, you can see that this is a quadratic function, roots are 8 and 12. If I want this function to be less than 0, the value of x must lie in the range of 8 to 12. So the domain of the function, right, x has to be greater than 8 and less than 12. Therefore, b option would be the correct answer to the question. Question number 17 here, p, q and r are the three non-negative integers such that p plus q plus r is equal to 10 and the maximum value of p, q plus q, r plus p, r plus p, q, r is what? Is also an actual z paper question, guys. See this. If I say that a plus b is equal to, let's say, 8, right? Now, then if I say that a and b are, both a and b are non-negative integers, if a and b are non-negative integers, then if a and b are non-negative integer, then the possible combination of a and b so that a plus b is equal to 8 are 1 and 7, 
2 and 6, 3 and 5, 4 and 4. For non-negative integer, these are the only possible cases. Now, in all these cases, a into b in the first case would be 7, in the second case it will be 12, in the third case it will be 15, in the fourth case it will be 16. You see that? As you bring the value of a and b close to each other, if you try to bring the value of a and b close to each other, right, the product keeps on increasing, right? If a and b comes closer to each other, the value keeps on increasing and it will become maximum when both of these two values are equal. This is exactly the same logic that we need to apply. Here, the summation of p plus q plus r is 10 and all three values of p, q are the non-negative integers. So basically, if I want to maximize, if I want to maximize the value of p, q plus q, r plus p, r plus p, q, r, right, all I have to do is just take the values of p, q, r as close as possible. Now, what are the non-negative integers possible so that they are as close as possible to each other, right, so and, and the value of p, q, plus q, r plus p, r plus p, q, r becomes maximum. The values that you can take would be, take one of the values as 4, next as 3, next as 3, right, in this case, all these values will be closest possible values for the, so that the summation comes out to be 10. Now the max value of p into q will be 12. Maximum value of q into r would be 9. Maximum value of p into r would be 12 again. Maximum value of p into q into r will be 36. If you add them up, 21 plus 12, 33 plus 36, this becomes 69. So the maximum value of this expression is 69, which you can see lies in the range of c option greater than equal to 60 and less than 70. This would be the correct answer of the question, everybody. Here's the question number 18. It says that P and Q are the positive number such that P power Q is equal to Q power P and Q is equal to 9P. What's the value of P? See guys, P raised to power Q. Can I write down this expression as P raised to power Q upon P is equal to Q, right? Now, you see that q is equal to 9p. If I put q as 9p upon p is equal to q, this get cancelled. So we get to know that p raised to power 9 is equal to q, right? And q is also equal to 9p. So can I replace, can I replace q as 9p? So you get to know p raised to power 8 is equal to 9. So P will be basically 8th root of 9. That is C option. C is the correct answer to the question. So guys, we have covered 18 questions of algebra, right? I'll try to complete the series of algebra before your ZAT exam. We'll covering all the questions of algebra from ZAT 2008 to 2021 in this whole series. Thank you so much for watching the video. See you in the next part. Subscribe to the channel Easy Connect by Smear to cover 100% complete syllabus coverage. In the description part of the video, I'm giving you the link of seven algebra workshops that I have taken on in special classes on unacademy special classes these are the completely free special classes you can use the codes me road yt to access these free special classes guys right thank you so much for watching the video please subscribe and share thanks a lot click on the bell icon too thank you